Welcome to another video lecture. Okay. In this video, we'll discuss taxation rules in computation of donor's tax. Now, what's donor's tax ba? Okay. According to Article 1725 of the Civil Code, okay, a donation is an act of liberality whereby a person disposes gratuitously of a thing or right in favor of another who accepts it. So basically, in a donation or in a contract of donation, there is a donor and a donee. So the donor, okay, meron siyang tinatawag natin na liberality. So when you say liberal, liberality, okay, there is freedom, no? There is freedom in giving something gratuitously. So uh, gratuitously means uh, giving something or transferring something without uh, receiving payment or compensation in return. Ayan. Now, kinds of donation. Ano-ano ba yung mga donations? Okay, so, we have donation mortis causa and donation inter vivos. And we also have other forms of donation. Okay, so, in a donation mortis causa, ito yung a donation no, that takes effect upon the death of the uh, decedent. And while a donation inter vivos naman, it takes effect okay, during the lifetime of the donor and the Don. So it becomes effective uh, yung donation mortis causa upon the death of the donor. Ayan, it is considered a testamentary disposition and governed by the law on succession. The donation is subject to estate tax if donation mortis causa. While a donation inter vivos takes effect during the lifetime of the donor. No? Habang buhay pa si donor. And the donation is subject to a donors tax and so uh, we have to recall no that still the motive is the controlling rule or the controlling uh, factor as to uh, donation by is a mortis causa or a uh, donation inter vivos and but we also have other forms of donation okay so a cancellation of indebtedness kapag may utang na kinancel siya okay so a debt cancelled by the creditor without any consideration is a donation and thus subject to donor's tax. Transfer of properties for less than adequate and full consideration. Okay, so property transferred other than real property. So mag apply lang ito kapag yung tin transfer is not a real property. Okay, uh, considered to be a capital asset. Okay, for less than adequate and full consideration, the amount by which the fair value or fair market value exceeded the value of the consideration shall be considered as a gift and subject to a donor's tax. So it is, uh, it is worth noting no, that uh, a transfer for less than adequate and full consideration will be considered as or will, will be subject to a donor's tax with the excess of the fair market value over the selling price kapag yung tin transfer is assets other than capital asset. Okay? Kasi kapag or kapag capital asset kasi yung tin transfer regardless of the of difference no ng selling price at saka ng fair market value ng such capital asset. Okay? Hindi yon subject sa donor's tax. Subject yon sa capital gains tax. Okay? Which is 6% whichever is higher, okay? Uh, of the gross selling price and the fair market value. So again, itong uh, donor stocks na ito, sa letter B, mag apply lang kapag yung tin-transfer with less than adequate and full consideration is other than a capital asset. Where the consideration is fictitious, the entire value of the property transferred shall be subject to donor stocks. So kapag fictitious naman, then the entire value, the entire fair market value of the thing no, being transferred will be subject to donor tax. Now, elements of taxable donation. So, ano-ano ba yung mga importante no, na elemento okay, or uh, requisite para yung isang donation will be a taxable one? Ayan. Una, there should be capacity of the donor to transfer property dapat yung donor natin uh, able siya or capable siya in uh, doing the transfer 
Okay? So, dapat, uh, si donor will only transfer what the donor own. Ayan. So, you cannot give what you do not have. Okay? So, there there should be donative intent. So, when you say donative intent, dapat intention, no? Talaga ng donor na mag-donate or ibigay. Okay? With liberality, gratuitously, yung isang property to another person. And there should be delivery. Remember that a donor, okay, being a contract, is a real contract. Okay? It can only effect, okay? or it may only take effect upon the delivery, okay? either actually or constructively, of the donated property to the donee. So, dapat yung property na i-donate ng donor kay donee is diniliver ng donor kay donee. Okay? Either actually or constructively. When you say actually, okay, physically nabigay kay donor at kay donee yung property na dinonate. When you say constructively naman, although hindi nabigay uh, physically yung property, but the ownership has already transferred to the donee. Okay? So, acceptance of the gift by the donee. So, the last element of a taxable donation, there should be acceptance of the gift, no? from the donor by the donee. Siyempre, si donee, meron pa rin siyang prerogative kung tatanggapin ba niya yung uh, dinonate na property o hindi. So, kapag tinanggap niya yon, then that will be, uh, or that will cause no, the perfection of the contract of donation. So, the transfer of property by gift is perfected from the moment the donor knows of the acceptance of the donee. So, uh, the, the, the gift or the contract okay, of donation is just perfected kapag nalaman na ni donor na inaccept ni donee yung property being donated. Now, formal requisites. Okay? Although the law used the term act, the law considers donation as a contract as shown by the fact that it requires acceptance. And that the rules on obligations and contracts apply to it as a suppletory law. So, Article 1732 or 732 of the New Civil Code. So, being so, the required form as provided below shall be observed otherwise void. So, dapat yung forms or yung formalities na ito ay dapat i-observe sa otherwise void yung magiging donation. Now, yung property subject to or yung property na i-donate it could be personal property when you say personal property those properties that can be moved or movable properties when you say real or uh, registrable property naman ay yung mga properties na fixed such as land and building now kapag yung i-donate naman is personal property okay so and the amount no and the amount of donation or the value of the personal property being donated is 5000 pesos or less then the form of donation is pwede lang siya oral okay, or in writing ayan so pwede lang siya verbal agreement no na bibigay ni ni, ni, ni donor yung isang property tapos inaccept naman ni doni pwede siya uh, hindi na in writing pero pwede din in writing Pero kapag yung amount no, or value ng donation is more than 5,000 pesos, okay, dapat in writing na yun. Okay? However, kapag yung property being donated is a real or registrable property, okay, kahit na or regardless of the amount, dapat it must be in public instrument. Ayan. So dapat naka-notarized siya. Okay, annotated by the or by an attorney. And so kahit na magkano pa yan, basta real property, building yan or land, kahit na magkano yung value or amount yan, dapat naka-public uh, document yan. Now, persons who may give or receive a donation, so sino-sino ba yung pwede magbigay or makareceive ng donation? So all persons who may contract and dispose of their property may make a donation. So, lahat ng tao na pwede mag, makipagkontrata 
makipag uh, or magdispose no ng kanilang mga assets may make a donation. Guardians and trustees cannot donate the property entrusted to them kasi syempre si guardian hindi siya yung owner ng property. Okay? At saka si trustee. Okay? Sila lang yung uh, persons na no, entrusted to administer the property, not uh, necessarily the owner of that property. And so the donor's capacity shall be determined as at the time of the making of the donation. So yung capacity ng isang uh, donor no to make donation or to dispose of a property is determined at the time na kung kailan siya magdodon. So, all those who are not specifically disqualified by law, therefore, may accept donations. Incapacity to succeed by will shall be applicable to donations inter vivos. Minors and others who cannot enter into a contract may become donees, but acceptance shall be done through their parents or representatives. So, yung mga minors, okay, uh, below 18, ayan, and others, uh, according to the law, who cannot enter into a contract, Pwede pa rin sila uh, maging doni or to accept a donation, okay? But through their parents or representatives. Ayan. So, donations made to conceived and unborn children. So, yung nasa chan pa lang may be accepted by those persons who uh, would legally represent them if they were already born. So, pati uh, yung guardians pa rin nila. Okay, or yung mother kapag uh, unborn children pa siya. Pwede, pa rin, pwede na si unborn children no, uh, magtanggap ng donation. Okay, donations made to incapacitated persons shall be void. So if a person is incapacitated, then the donation made to them is void. Though simulated under the guise of another contract okay, through a person who is uh, interposed. Now, no person may give or receive by way of donations, more than he may give or receive by will. The donations shall be inefficious in all that it may exceed this limitation. So, kung ano lang yung uh, allowed ka to donate, then only up and, uh, up to that amount yung pwede mong i-donate. Okay? That is the limitation. At kung ano lang yung pwede mo matanggap okay, by way of donation, or through a will, or, you, or ano lang yung pwede mo ma-receive by will, then yun lang din yung dapat mong ma-receive by donation. Donation of conjugal or community property. So ano ba yung conjugal or community property as discussed in ST taxation? Okay. So yung property na the owner are, the, are both the spouse, okay? the husband and the wife. So, husband and wife are considered as separate and distinct taxpayers. Okay? They are not one okay? in the eyes of the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Si husband at saka si wife, separate taxpayers sila. For purposes of donor's tax. However, if what was donated is a conjugal or community property and only the husband signed the deed of donation, then there is only one donor for donor's tax purposes without prejudice to the right of the wife to question the validity of the donation without her consent pursuant to the pertinent provisions of the Civil Code of the Philippines and the Family Code of the Philippines. So, kapag may donation daw at yung property being donated is a conjugal or community property tapos si husband lang yung nag-sign, okay? Siyempre, uh, what, what is being donated is only the part no, or the portion of the property that belongs to the husband. Pero siyempre, kasi nga, conjugal o community property yun, okay, uh, the wife no, can question the validity of the uh, donation okay, uh, made by the husband without the consent of the wife. Kasi nga, sa kanilang dalawa yun. Kaya dapat, may consent ang dalawa, the husband and the wife with regards to the property being donated. Husband and wife cannot donate any conjugal or community property without the consent of the other. However, either spouse may, without the consent of the other, of the other make moderate, moderate, sakto lang na donations for charity or on occasions of 
family rejoicing or family distress. Husband and wife may make a joint donation of conjugal or a community property. Ayan. So, kapag uh, the donation is being made, okay, for reason of family rejoicing at saka family distress or for charitable purposes, at yung donation is moderate naman, pwede din. Pwede lang naman yun. Okay? So, in this case, and for donor's tax purposes, each spouse shall be considered as separate donor. Okay, separate donor sila of his or her interest in the property, one half being the gift of the husband and one half or the other half that of the wife. So, actually, si husband at saka si wife, okay, in, uh, in donor's taxation, they are separate. Okay? So, magpa-file ng donor's tax si husband kapag mayroon siyang separate donation at saka si wife naman kapag mayroon siyang separate donation, magpa-file din siya ng separate uh, donor's tax. Okay, return. Ayan. Now, ano-ano ba yung mga exempt donations under special laws? Okay, ito, ito yung listahan, no? Ng mga exempt donations and uh, under special laws. Now, ano naman yung mga void donations? Okay, those made between persons who were guilty of adultery. Ayan. Or concubinage. The time of the donation. Those made between persons found guilty of the same criminal offense in consideration thereof. Those made between the spouses during the marriage except moderate gifts, ayan, which the spouses may give each other on the occasion of any family rejoicing. So actually, si husband, hindi pwede mag-donate kay wife. Si wife naman, hindi pwede mag-donate kay husband. Okay? However, uh, it cannot be without an exemption. Kasi pwede yon if moderate uh, gifts lang naman to each other. Okay? Si, si husband, binigyan niya ng moderate gift si wife. And si wife, binigyan niya ng uh, moderate gift si husband in the occasion of any family rejoicing. Now, uh, you may ask, no? Okay, how much is moderate? Okay, Siyempre, uh, that is a question of fact depending upon the circumstances, no? of a particular case. Ayan. Those made between persons living together as husband and wife without a valid marriage. So, kung walang valid marriage, tapos uh, cohabitation lang, void yun. Those made to a public officer or his wife. So, yung mga naka, nagtatrabaho sa government, yung mga government officials natin, they cannot uh, give no donations no, or they cannot also receive donations pati yung kanilang wife or descendants and ascendants by reason of their office. Now, let's proceed to donors or gift tax. So, ano ba yung donors or gift tax? Okay. Donors tax is a tax on a donation or a gift no? and is imposed on the gratuitous transfer. Gratuitous transfer, transfer without consideration of property between two or more persons who are living. Ayan, buhay pa sila at the time of the transfer. Now, a donor's tax or gift tax is a tax levied, assessed, collected, and paid upon the transfer by any person, resident or non-resident of the property by gift. Okay? So, it is a tax imposed on the exercise of the donor's right during lifetime to transfer property okay, to others in turn of gift. The donor's tax is not a property tax. So, hindi siya property tax. Ha? Although property yung t-transfer. But is a tax imposed on the transfer of property by way of gift inter vivos. So, mangyayari si donor's tax not because of a property but because of the transfer of a property from one person to another. Okay, by a donor inter vivos or yung donation affected okay, during the lifetime of the donor. So as in the case of the estate tax, the donor's tax is an excise. Thus, the tax is imposed on the donor and determined with reference to all the donor's gifts. So the donor's tax, the law uh, imposable is the law enforced, no? at the time of the perfection completion of the uh, donation. So, yung gagamitin na batas okay, with regards to a donor's tax is yung batas effective at the time of the donation. 
okay? or perfection or completion of the donation. Now, tapos na tayo sa definition ng donation and what is donor's tax. Now, let's uh, discuss naman the gross gift okay? or the gross donation. So, what is the definition of gross gift ba? Okay? So, it includes real and personal property, the donation of real and personal property, whether tangible or intangible, or mixed, okay, wherever situated. So, lahat ng properties, okay, okay uh, kahit saan pa yan situated, or tangible or intangible pa yan, it may be, or it may uh, form part of our gross gift. Now, composition of gross gift. So, the composition of gross gift will depend on the citizenship and or residence of the donor. So, if resident or citizen, he is taxable on the donation of property situated within and without the Philippines. However, if the donor is a non-resident alien, he shall be subject to tax on properties donated which are located within the Philippines only. So, just like estate taxation, yung donor's taxation natin, uh, the same lang yung treatment nila okay uh, with regards to the competition of the gross gift okay so if the donor is a resident or citizen then he is taxable of all the donations situated okay within or outside the Philippines kapag non-resident alien naman taxable lang siya for donations within the Philippines thus ayan if the donor is a citizen or resident alien the gross gift may be composed of Real property, tangible personal property, intangible personal property within or without or outside the Philippines. In the case of non-resident alien naman, ay yung gross gift niya will be real property within the Philippines, tangible personal property within the Philippines, intangible personal property within. Okay? Taxable yun, ta taxable pa rin yun or part yun ng gross gift. Unless, okay, there is a reciprocity in which case it is not taxable. So just like what we have discussed no, about reciprocity rule sa estate taxation, uh, such a reciprocity rule still applies no, here in donor's taxation. It should be noted that the above rule is the same again. Yes, that uh, rule that applies in the computation of gross uh, estate. That's what I have said kanina. So ito yung matrix natin. Okay, so classification of property. Yan, real ba siya or Pers uh, personal property. Ayan. So, kung real property, if the uh, re, uh, if the do if the donor is a resident or citizen, so resident or citizen, that's resident citizen, resident alien, citizen naman, non-resident citizen, or resident citizen. Okay? So, taxable siya sa donations of property situated within or without. Okay? Ayan. Pati na rin si non uh, resident ah kapag si non resident alien eh, without reciprocity uh, real property taxable lang siya kapag yung real property is within kapag without not taxable ayan kapag uh, with reciprocity naman so regardless no of uh, basta real property okay tangible yan kaya taxable siya of uh, donations no, of real property within lang. Kapag without, hindi siya nagiging taxable. Now, the reciprocity rule applies for intangible properties. Okay? So, balik tayo sa resident or citizen. So, sa resident or citizen, again, lahat ng properties, real or personal, tangible or intangible, within or without, taxable siya doon. Okay? Magiging part ng gross gift niya. Kapag non-resident alien naman, without reciprocity, okay, so taxable lang siya sa uh, properties within the Philippines, including intangible properties. Okay, yung mga intangible properties within the Philippines, taxable pa rin siya doon. However, kapag uh, the donor is a non-resident alien with reciprocity, okay, the reciprocity rule applies, taxable lang siya sa lahat ng tangible property real property within the Philippines and tangible pra, uh, tangible personal property within the Philippines. Lahat ng without plus 
uh, intangible property within, okay, hindi siya taxable doon. Hindi yun magiging part ng kanyang gross gift. Now, the donor is a non-resident alien and the properties are intangible personal such are which are located within the Philippines. Okay? So, no donor's tax, as discussed kanina, shall be collected in respect of intangible property in the following instances. So, si donations ng non-resident alien okay, uh, with reciprocity or the reciprocity rule applies. Okay? Such uh, intangible property within the Philippines shall not be part of the gross gift no? of the donor, of the non-resident alien donor. Ayan. Now, intangible personal property, okay, the following intangible personal properties are considered within the Philippines. So, ano-ano ba yung mga intangible personal property na considered within, no? The, the, the CITOS is considered to be within the Philippines. So, pareho, parehas lang to sa uh, rules ng estate taxation. Okay? So, franchise with uh, which must be exercised within the Philippines, shares, obligations, or bonds issued by corporations or uh, sociedad anonima, organized or constituted in the Philippines in accordance with its law, shares, obligations, or bonds issued by any foreign corporation, 85% of uh, the business of which is located in the Philippines, Shares, obligations, or bonds issued by a foreign corporation if such shares, obligations, or bonds have acquired a business situs in the Philippines and shares or rights in any partnership, business, or industry established in the Philippines. Lahat ng ating na-mention are considered to be intangible personal property within the Philippines. Now, how to value na ba? Alam na natin kung ano yung ating gross gift. Okay? At ano-ano yung magiging part ng ating gross gift kapag ang donor is a resident or citizen or a non-resident alien without reciprocity or kapag with reciprocity. Now, let's uh, discuss how to value ba our gross gift. Okay? So, the valuation of the property donated shall be made at the time of gift, which is the time of the terminating event. If the gift is made in property, the fair market value thereof at the time of the gift shall be considered the amount of the gift. So, the value of the property you know, being donated shall be determined at the time of the donation. If the case of real property, the value shall be whichever is higher, whichever is higher between the fair market value as determined by the Commissioner of Internal Revenue or the Zonal Value, or the fair market value as shown in the schedule of values fixed by the provincial and city assessors or the assessed value. So whichever is higher, okay? And the fair market value is defined as the price at which any seller will sell and any buyer will buy, both willingly without any force of intimidation. So whichever is higher between 1 and 2, yun yung magiging uh, part or value ng uh, property na yun, okay, na uh, included sa ating gross gift. If the case of stocks naman, bonds, or other securities, the following rules shall apply. Okay? If listed and traded in the local exchange, so if yung ating stocks, bonds, or other securities is nakalist sa sa local stock exchange, so dito sa Pilipinas kapag nakalist siya sa Philippine Stock Exchange, then the fair market value shall be the mean the mean between the highest and the lowest quoted selling price of the securities on the valuation date. Ayan. So, you just add, you just have to oh, ano, add the highest and the lowest divided by 2 okay, of the uh, quoted selling price of such securities in the valuation date, then, yun na yung value niya. Okay? That is considered to be the mean value of that uh, stocks, bonds, or other securities. If hindi naman siya listed and uh, traded in the stock exchange, then the fair market value shall depend on whether the stocks are preferred or common. So, kapag hindi siya nakalist sa Philippine stock market or the Philippine stock exchange, then depende kung ano ba yung shares. Uh, common ba yun or preferred stock? 
Just like in XT taxation, okay, if the stock are common, then the market value shall be the book value of the security no? on the valuation date or on the date nearest the valuation date if the value during the valuation date is not available. If the stocks naman are preferred stock, then the fair value or the fair market value shall be the par value of the security. So, ito yun, uh, yun yung rules no? on how to value the uh, properties to be included in our gross gift. Okay, to illustrate, Ara gave the following properties to various donors on December 25, 2018. So, ito yung mga donations ni Ara no? on December 25, 2018. Wow, ang yaman naman ni Ara. Ayan, so ito yung mga dinonate niya, house and lot in London, apartment house in Naga City, car in uh, Iriga City, car in London, savings deposit with BPI, time deposit in a New York bank, Okay, accounts receivable, debtor residing in the Philippines and debtor residing in Hong Kong, franchise exercised in New York, franchise exercised in the Philippines, investment in good time company, partnership established in Hong Kong, and uh, investment in lovers company, partnership established in the uh, Philippines. So, yun yung mga properties no, being donated by ARA during uh, December 25, 2018. Now, let's uh, compute okay, the gross gift. So, ano-ano ba yung gross gift niya? Kapag si Ara ay resident citizen or resident alien or non-resident citizen, in short, kapag resident or citizen siya, ano ba yung gross gift niya in number 2 kapag non-resident alien without reciprocity? Or ano ba yung gross gift niya kapag non-resident alien siya with reciprocity. Okay. So, the first requirement, okay, if the donor or if ARA is a resident citizen or resident alien or a resident citizen, ayan, ano ba yung mangyayari? Ano ba yung part ng kanyang gross gift? So, yung part ng kanyang gross gift, as uh, discussed kanina, kapag ikaw ay resident, okay, and saan ba dito si resident, resident alien, or uh, resident citizen, or kapag ikaw naman ay citizen, so ano naman yung mga citizen, or resident citizen, or non-resident citizen. In short, kapag ikaw ay resident or citizen, lahat ng iyong dinonate, within or without the Philippines, tangible or intangible properties shall form part of the gross gift. Kaya, uh, Tinotal natin tong lahat, then yun yung kanyang gross gift. 13,895,000. Now, with regards to requirement number 2, what if daw si Ara is a non-resident alien without reciprocity? Ngayon, okay? ano yung magiging gross gift niya or the amount of the gross gift of Ara kapag NRA siya or non-resident alien uh, without reciprocity? So remember, kapag non-resident alien ka, uh, you are just taxable with your gifts no, of properties and such property is situated within the Philippines. Okay? And if without reciprocity naman, so lahat ng gift mo, tangible or intangible, basta within the Philippines, okay, it will form part of your gross gift. Okay, Ano-ano yon? So ito yon, car, uh, apartment, ala, okay, within the Philippines, in Naga, Car in Iriga City, so within the Philippines pa rin yan. Savings deposit, okay? uh, intangible property yan, within the Philippines. Accounts receivable, okay? the debtor residing in the Philippines, so within the Philippines yan, na intangible. Franchise exercised in the Philippines, so uh, intangible yan, within the Philippines. And investment in lover's company, huh? uh, established daw siya in the Philippines, so this is still an intangible property within the Philippines. So, again, ha, kapag a non-resident alien ka and without reciprocity, you are taxable to all your gifts within the Philippines, tangible or intangible man yan. Basta NRA without reciprocity. As total, that's 8,955,000 yung gross gift niya. Now, what if naman si Ara is a non-resident alien 
Tapos, with reciprocity or the reciprocity rule applies. So, ano yung magiging gross gift niya? As discussed kanina, if a non-resident alien, okay, tap, uh, yung donor is a non-resident alien, tapos, yung uh, with, with reciprocity or the reciprocity rule applies, taxable lang siya sa lahat ng donations niya within the Philippines and such property is tangible. Kapag intangible, no, it will not form part uh, of the gross gift of the non-resident alien donor kahit na yung intangible property na yan eh, nasa Pilipinas pa yan or within the Philippines pa yan. Basta with reciprocity, only donations within the Philippines of a uh, tangible property, yun lang yung magiging part ng kanyang gross gift. Kaya, sa so makikita nyo dito, that's just the apartment, tangible, ay, tangible real property, car in Iriga City, okay, tangible property pa rin, others are intangible within, so hindi yan magiging part ng gross gift, kasi nga, with reciprocity. So only the apartment, no, in Naga City and the car in Iriga City. Yung magiging gross gift niya. And as computed, that's 8,520,000 pesos yung gross gift. Okay? With regards to the third requirement.